So here's Fringe Review at the Medicine Chest, and though it's March, the Brighton Festival for Fringe in some ways is well underway. Tickets have gone on sale, and I'm here with uh, the creator, director of a very big project, which is the stage version of the film uh, Get Carter. James uh, White, uh, the obvious question for me, or maybe less obvious, is that uh, Michael Caine decides to grace this show on its first night with his great presence. He slips in unnoticed to the back row of the home centre. Lights come up on the stage, and what does Michael see? Michael sees an incredible uh, dark noir thriller based on on the the novel rather than the film. I think he will be uh, quite surprised with the differences uh, uh, with the film. Um, and the play and you know and hopefully uh, he'd, he'd like it I've asked this question to people who have staged um, you know versions of films before and then they remind me this isn't a version of the film this is a version of the book or there was already a staged version of this and we've adapted the script and so on so as somebody directing the stage version of the novel of such an iconic film where does the film and its influence sit in the rehearsal room um, it hopefully sits outside the rehearsal room, but you can't, I mean, you can't help uh, uh, sort of draw on it. It's such an iconic film and, you know, the, the, there's the same scenes and, and obviously the characters are the same. And you can't help but draw a, a, a bit of a comparison. But you try and stick further away from it. I mean, many of the actors uh, steer clear of the film for that intention. Are, are you going to get a percentage of your audience who have only seen the film, um, you know, wanting to see the film? Uh, yes, yes, of course, but, um, you know, it, you, you can't completely replicate such an iconic film. And this story really drags it back to its roots. Jack's a, a harder, nastier, man in this novel that was written in 1968 by Ted Lewis who was from Scunthorpe himself and that's where uh, this play is set. Um, I, th I think people will, it's far more psychological and I think that's what you can get from a piece of theatre that often you can't, can't get from a piece of film. It's still jarring, it's still hard hitting uh, outbursts of violence. And I, I'm hoping that people will leave going, well, you know, it wasn't like the film, or they were, or I remember that bit from the film, but also going, wow, Ted Lewis is an amazing writer. So for the uninitiated, what's Get Carter about? Don't give too much away. Carter's about a man, Jack Carter, who is from Scunthorpe and works in London has been working in London for 15 years. He gets a telephone call about his brother who's been killed in a car crash, a reeking of food. Jack goes up uh, to his home town to investigate and all is not what it seems. It's uh, very influenced by the noir. It's actually called a neo-noir because it's uh, sort of in the 60s and 70s. Neo-noir, Brit noir. And it really uh, kind of pays homage uh, to that bluff and counter bluff. No one ever tells the truth. Uh, you know, it's a... how, how do you select from all that description of a novel? How do you kind of turn that into stage direction? How do you take all of those spoken words and turn them into the choice of dialogue that you're going to make in this play? Uh, well, the adapted Jonathan Holloway yeah, has made an incredible uh, uh, made an incredible piece from the novel and uh, it clearly wasn't a, you know wasn't an easy task but I think he's done an amazing job and really captured the essence of this uh, grimy industrial town run by uh, councillors on the on the brink of being something big um, scenes are so evocative of the 70s and he's managed to kind of capture that really 
it's quite an impressive piece and I only hope that uh, you know I can direct it truthfully and honestly and that that's all I'm going to ask the actors to do as well. Do you, do you think that the writer um, that adapts this as a script, adapts a novel as a script, is also visualising that as, in a filmic way? Or do you think they're trying not to do that as well? Because I, I'm, I'm just assuming it must be almost impossible. Um, I think Jonathan probably is. Uh, he has a strong track record of taking uh, film that were novels and, uh, and adapting them and he does do it in quite a cinematic style and I, I think that's perfectly uh, reasonable for a piece of theatre to be cinematic and I haven't seen very many often they fail for some reason but I really think you can get you, you can get cinematic theatre and it, it does exist well, I, mean, I mean, when I asked you, you know, to say what would Michael Caine see, you immediately said, you know, they're going to see something noir, which for me is a kind of film reference. So I assume that even whether you've seen the film or not, there are virtues to be made on the stage in creating cinematic theatre. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, and I'm really looking forward to those challenges. Yeah. But, but just, just give us a, an idea of that again. You're going to be playing in a very big space. And I guess there's quite a lot you can do if you've got good lighting. Um, you've got somebody writing an original score for this. Again, you know, if we move away from the idea that this isn't going to be just a version of the film, but it might be cinematic theatre, what kind of tricks of a trade are there to, to give it that quality? Um, it's, I guess it's, it's style and it's uh, use of lighting and uh, sound. It's moving away from uh, heavy blackouts and shuffling of furniture you know obviously that doesn't happen in a film so my designer Jeffrey Driver has built an expansive set that we're able to go in to each each area of this town freely without having to uh, move a thing and I think that's how we'll do it. It's very much like a, a television set, I guess, you know. And how are you going to keep hold of all these actors and get them to behave themselves? Because I'm aware without giving away the whole cast that you've got some pretty strong personalities here. We have, and that, you know, that's why I've cast them. I guess there's, there's potential here for that to become a real creative volcano. Um, well, I'd hope not, but I, you know, I, I, I've been known to crack the whip. Uh, they're all very good uh, friends of, of mine or previous colleagues I've worked with, all been strongly recommended. Uh, the casting process took about eight weeks. It was a long, long old slap. Are you, are you realising a pretty defined vision of that adapted version, you know, of the script? Or are you going in there wanting their input? Uh, I'm going to be wanting their input. They're all heavily passionate about the piece. They're all eager to read the novel, and, and many of them have done. So I think we're all going to be singing more or less in the same hymn sheet. And then when this thing actually goes live in a very, very big venue, how are you going to ensure it kind of reaches the back row as well as the front row? Uh, projection. Uh, I, uh, that was a challenge, and uh, in audition we spoke about that. And uh, it's obviously very uh, naturalistic acting, but then when you get on a, a massive, great stage, you do have to up it. Other than that, we use radio mic. Okay, so this is going to be a quite a big spectacle, James. Yes, definitely. definitely. Yeah, very exciting. Uh, our, again, our composer, Rob, uh, Robert J.B. Maloney, has produced some uh, fantastic, uh, fantastic music uh, of, in the ilk of uh, John Barry and, and Roy Budden and pays homage and also brings his own unique sort of quality to that. Just having, you, having seen the film, having read the novel, having now worked with the script, quite a lot of time's passed since that originally all came out. You know, how much... Um, 
to speak to an audience of today, if someone's going along who might be 17 or 18 years old and may see this, what are they going to see that, you know, would be different from the generation that first saw it? I guess they're going to see a, a world that thankfully has, has gone. However, there are uh, parallels within the, uh, within the production of uh, uh, councillors, uh, backhanders in government, uh, corruption, uh, prostitution is, 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 is rife still. Uh, uh, and and maybe, maybe it is slightly nostalgic of uh, a time gone by, but it will also be very, very different. It's, it's not like life on Mars. It's not like life on Mars. Not that, no, James, best of luck with it and thanks very much.